Hey y'all, it's Fab Jen. Welcome back to my channel and thank you for watching. Today we're going to be talking about Real Techniques Metal Luxury Line Brushes. I know I am effing that up, but they're the Real Techniques Metal Brushes. And they are the new addition to the Real Technique line. I'm really excited about it. I have been using these brushes for approximately about a month or two. So I haven't just started using them and some of them are going to be dirty because I have been using them and I haven't had a chance to clean them. So the first brush I want to talk about is the 100 brush and this is a powder brush. I believe they're marketing it as a powder brush and it reminds me a lot of the Makeup Forever 128 brush and I brought this one from Sephora.com. You can also buy it at some local Sephora's but not all Sephora's will carry all 80 plus brushes of the Makeup Forever just to let y'all know. So as you can see they're very very similar very springy both of them they both have a really nice weight to them this is a little bit lighter because of the wood but this part is plastic and this goes for all uh, the real technique metal brushes this part feels like plastic and the top part here feels like a metal uh, ferrule or something inside of its metal. So it's a nice way to it and it feels luxurious which I like. Price point ranges from anywhere from $14 to $30. I'm going to put it in that kind of price point. I'm going to have that price listed here. So these both have really nice spring to it. Um, do these both apply product the same? No. I feel like this one applies better. However, this one's pretty goddamn close. So if you don't want to shove off $50 for that one, get this bad boy right here. I use it for blush. I use it, boom, blush underneath your eyes. You can use it to dust on highlight if you want. And you can use it to just apply a nice soft wash of powder or you can use it to pack on powder. And this is the Real Techniques 300 brush and this is a blush brush today to apply my cream blush as well as powder blush. I feel like it works excellent for that. I also feel like it does really nicely for highlight too. But I mainly use this for blush. Do I think it's the best blush brush ever? No, I don't. I feel like it does shift a little bit, but considering uh, how it is, say, compared to e.l.f. and all the other brushes, this performs really, really well. I really do like it. I'm going to compare it to the 156 Makeup Forever brush. This one's a little bit more fluffier. This one's a little bit more dense and less bouncy. So I feel like um, with this one, I have to pick up a little bit more product with. I feel like it might eat up a little product. This one, boom, blush, highlight, under eye powder, excellent. Is it as good as this one? Absolutely not, but it's pretty dang close. You could definitely use this for underneath your eye. You could definitely use this for highlighter and blush. This one right here, Excellent. The next one's going to be the 301 brush. This is what I consider a contour brush. I feel like it's cut a little bit funny, but I believe all of these are cut by hand because the other one I received is cut a little bit better. This one's cut a little funny, but they perform the same. And I'm going to compare this one to the Marc Jacobs number 15 brush, which is relatively new to Marc Jacobs collection. Um, both are very similar in um, shape. I feel like this one's more dense and this one's a little bit more fluffy. I feel like this one disperses the product a little bit better, but this one's pretty goddamn close. I mean, it is like a, one hair off from being this brush. And this brush is about $38, $40. This one, what, $20 something dollars, so half the price. Like, this brush is pretty damn awesome. I brought two of these. I'm very happy with this brush. I feel like it doesn't overshift any product and I feel that it blends really nicely. Uh, just be careful when you're picking up the product that you don't pick up too much because it can pick up a lot of product. But other than that, this is an excellent brush and I would highly recommend it, especially if you're into contouring. Next one, this is the last face brush. This is the 101 brush. This one is my least used and my least loved brush. I use this pretty much to apply cream underneath my eyes a little down my nose chin I feel like that's what it works best for I would never use a brush like this for foundation because I'd rather use something that has a uh, tight density to it so I can buff it into the skin and it can be more full coverage I feel like this would just be a little bit of a pain to blend out my highlight and contour so I definitely don't use this for a foundation 
but I do use it for precision under eye and t-zone work but I feel like even then it's not that great this is one of those brushes the 101 brush that I would tell you to skip out of all the real technique face brushes I tell you to skip this one one up is the 200 the 200 of course is a shadow brush and this is something you use to pack on color and to blend out because it is like a finger it's the size of a finger and it is a little fluffy here so you can definitely use that for blending work I find that this is a really nice brush I mean it's not one of those eye brushes that I reach for the most like to pack on color but it is a nice brush to add a nice wash medium density uh, color payoff to the lid I feel like I would have to go back a little bit more when I've used it to apply shadow but overall it's a really nice performing brush I do like that it's the shape of a finger I could probably see this being used more for creams than anything but it's a really nice brush and I will get used to it and again that's the 200 brush. the 201 brush and this is like a pencil brush it's pretty thick for a pencil brush I wish it was a little bit smaller and the thing that I do like it. It does perform well. It does add that nice crease color and it blends everything out. But the thing that I don't like is this gap here. There is when you press it against your eye. I wish y'all could see that. Maybe I'll zoom in post editing. When you press it down on your eyelid you see that gap right there it touches my eyelid and drives me crazy so if you pressed hard enough on your lid and you moved it you might move your eyeshadow so that's the only thing I don't like is this gap here I wish it was a little bit thicker so that way when you did press down on your eyelid with this brush that you didn't feel this part to it so that's the only thing I don't like about that other than that it's a great performer next brush that I've used the least out of all of these is the 202 because I've got my favorite eyeliner brushes but this one works really well I've used it about three or four times and I use it for brows I think it looks it works well for brows and I haven't used it for eyeliner but mostly use it for brows but I do like it that it has a nice precision tip to it it hasn't flared out and lost its shape I have cleaned it off a couple of times a lot of people like this brush I mean it's not rocking my world because I haven't really used it a lot yet but um, this 202 brush is pretty nice I don't regret buying it but it's not something that I'm like oh it's like memorable so hey man, the packaging was gorgeous the makeup forever brushes do not come in gorgeous packaging Marc Jacobs one yes please bear with me because sometimes I get busy with work and life and I don't get back to comments sometimes three weeks I just let the comments build up but I do apologize I'm about not ignoring that. comments I read every comment that comes in my email box and I do listen and write down every request that I can in my computer so that way I know what you guys want to see so that is it for now again rate comment subscribe if you like and I will see you guys in the next video bye